Depending on your age, you may know Sue Ann Nivens. If you get too close, you're afraid the little pilot light of desire that flickers within you might turn your whole oven on. <laughs> Rose Nyland. Or Elka Ostrowski. You thought Liberace was straight? I could have turned him. <laughs> uh, Sierra, you are so beautiful. Yes, you She's a peregrine are. falcon. But people oh. and creatures of all ages yeah. know and love <laughs> Betty White. <laughs> we thought we'd bring you here to the Central Park Zoo because you like animals more than people. Well, uh, I, I don't necessarily admit that, but yes, I do. <laughs> when did this love affair with animals start? Oh, in the womb. My really? mother and dad were the same way. Yeah, you know, so it's been a it's been a joy of my life the whole time. At 89, Betty White is showing no signs of slowing down. In fact, the Golden Girl is red hot, and not just in Cleveland. How many guys gave you their number last night? One or two. <laughs> <laughs> She has a hit sitcom, a new book about her life called If You Ask Me, and of course you won't, and an upcoming ad campaign for AARP. The message? Get over your age. A lot of people come up, they reach a certain age and they say, oh, well, no, I'm too old for this, too old for this. You're never too old for anything. Well, maybe some things, but... <laughs> now, do you prefer being called Margaret? or Satan's mistress. <laughs> We've heard it both ways. From the movie The Proposal to the 2010 Super Bowl ad for Snickers. You're playing like Betty White out there. That's not what your girlfriend said. Oh, baby. Betty White has shown audiences she isn't just sweet, she's sassy. Why do you think wrinkles and randiness have been such a great combination for you? I think the randiness is always done with a sense of humor. I mean, a joke Sure, it can be a, a naughty joke, but it has to be pretty funny. If there's one thing I'm known for, it's my muffin. <laughs> Double entendre I love. The people who get it, enjoy it. The people who don't get it, no harm. You were asked to host Saturday Night Live a number of times, and you had turned them down until there was that massive Facebook campaign. Well, and I don't... I'm such a technological idiot. I, I didn't even know what Facebook was. I didn't know anything about the program. But years ago, early in my career, I turned it down because I'm so California-oriented, and it's such a New York-identified show. I thought, oh, I'll stick out like a, you know, outhouse in a rainstorm. <laughs> I just... Instead, the oldest person to ever host the show got SNL its best ratings since 2008. Now, Hot in Cleveland on TV Land is one of the top-rated shows on cable. Hear that? It's the sound of us all turning against you. <laughs> if you have one good series, you know, it's a blessing. Two good series is unusual. Three is... is phenomenal but right now I'm working with these wonderful women on Hot in Cleveland and Valerie Bertinelli and Wendy Malick and Jane Leaves are like it's like the, the buddy ship we had on, on Golden Girls and Mary Tyler Moore it's where do you get privileges like that I taste it every minute she says the actors she's worked with on all three shows have been like family and she's felt their love and loss as she gets older you know, I thought about you when Rue died. Oh, losing Because losing. now you're the only golden girl left. I'm the only one left, and I'm the oldest. That's what amazed me, because I thought, well, I can't, you know, I'll be the, maybe the first to go. But Ruthie, we thought, was going to make it. She was not well, and then when we lost her, it was just like tearing her heart out. She was such a fun lady. You were initially cast as Blanche, weren't you? I was initially cast as Blanche, but I had played uh, Sue Ann Nivens on the Mary Tyler Moore show. I remember that well. Well, she was the neighborhood nymphomaniac. I'll show them. Sue Ann Nivens doesn't give in without a fight. That's not what the cab drivers tell me. <laughs> and they'd ask my husband, Alan Ludden, they'd ask, how close to Betty is Betty and Sue Ann? 
He said, well, they're the same, except Betty can't cook, of course. <laughs> Why, Betty White. Why, Alan Lutz. Well, it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you. What are your plans? Betty White met Why? Alan Ludden on the, the set of his game the show, the Password. She calls him the love of her life and says she hasn't been seriously involved with anyone else since his death in 1981. When you've had the best, who needs the rest? He was, he was, it was special, it was very special. So there's no, but, but that doesn't keep you from having fun with somebody and, and uh, going out and having dates. And uh, Robert Redford never calls. But I read something sad that you miss the human contact of Alan and your marriage and your relationship. You go out with an, a couple, let's say, and all of a sudden you'll see one or the other reach over and, 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 and uh, or just, you know, something like that. Those are the things I miss. It's just that, that level of personal affection that has nothing to do with sex. I'm talking about just the personal contact that's, that's an empty feeling. I know you have stepchildren. Are you sorry you never had your own children? No, I've never regretted it. Uh, I, I'm so compulsive about stuff. I know if I had ever gotten pregnant, of course, that would have been my whole focus. But I didn't choose to have children because I'm focused on my career. And I just don't think as compulsive as I am that I could manage both. So there's a harbor seal? Here's Nikki right here. Oh, oh there you oh, go. Oh, you Come can see it. Bank. Right this self-proclaimed workaholic oh, has another book coming out next year about her love of oh, zoos. Betty White's got a lot going on, and she likes it that way. It is such a blessing. I, I cannot possibly tell you, Katie. It, and it's a constant surprise to me, because as you get to this age, you've lost a lot of your close ones. That you, you don't just sit and... and and talk to them about it, they're not there anymore. Are you afraid of dying? No, not at all, not at all. My mother had the most wonderful outlook on death. She would always say, nobody knows. People think they do, but you can believe whatever you want to believe what happens at that last moment. But nobody ever knows until it happens. But she said it's a secret. So all growing up, whenever we, lose somebody, she'd always say, now they know the secret. Thank goodness you don't know the secret, Betty, or you wouldn't be here. But a lot of people probably want to know, what's your secret? What advice would you give to other people who want to have a rich, long life like you've enjoyed? When I pontificate, it sounds so, so, you know, well, oh, well, well. She's preaching. I'm not preaching, but I think maybe I learned it from my animal friends. Kindness and, and consideration of somebody besides yourself. And I think that, that keeps you feeling young. I really do. Advice as ageless as Betty White herself. Do you think I'm just another one of these silly women who can't resist your dime store charm? My apologies. I didn't say stop. <laughs> At 89, this Golden Girls spotlight is shining brighter than ever. You are on fire. Oh, it's so ridiculous. I, generations have grown up and they keep growing. They say, oh, yeah, my grandmother, oh, my great-grandmother used to watch me. <laughs> You're but like, thanks. Betty White at the Central Park Zoo later on Sunday morning.